Morning, guys. Morning, Morning. Morning. I jump right in with uh, with Monty that that uh, God has pulled us together on the same book out of God's Word and that to bring this message and that. Um, I had a, a message that I really felt God was asking me to, to bring and to deliver and that. And I worked hard on it, studied, and got things together and all that. <clears throat> Finished it up about midnight last night. Got the wonderful tap on the shoulder from God that I am <laughs> so prone to know that uh, put it away. It's not what I need to have you say to the men. Set your alarm for a couple hours, get a couple hours of sleep, and get up. And uh, I'll give you the message that you can, uh, can bring to the men at the breakfast tonight this morning. I've been there probably 15, 20 times beforehand. I've literally had situations where I've left my house heading for a study. Not, not to do this, not to, to bring a message, but to do a study and go, God, I have absolutely nothing. Uh, I have nothing that I have prepared. God's faithfulness in that. He's put a worship song on the radio, which is my connection to God. And it brings me into his presence and that going through. And the word and song began to talk and minister to me. And God's faithful to uh, bring his message. And as I unlock the door and flip the lights onto the place, we sit down and God brings the message. So. I am uh, trusting and believing and grateful to the to Lord for, for this message. I hope it uh, speaks into your heart as, as we get going this morning. Take a look at um, the area of experiencing God. We're, we're in chapter 8. Um, God's invitation to join Him in His work. And as important as that is, as we begin to, to get into that area, that I keep getting input, comments, questions from uh, the guys that are going through the study of that is that I'm just not seeing God. I'm not hearing from God. I'm not experiencing God. And we spent four months going through this and that. When, when does it happen? What's, what's not taking place in my life that I'm not <clears throat> experiencing God in the way that I feel I should be faithful to come to studies and be been in his word in that um, what's happening and I was taken back to what Monty was talking about because that's the essence of the message now we're going to go back to the concept of the love relationship the relationship with God that we have spent literally a couple months developing repetitively over and over and over again God's stressing through his word and through the, the message that the author gives us in his book and that, of that importance to be in a relationship with God that we might experience in him. And yet something's, something's missing. In our, in our book, it says there's a world of difference between knowing something to be true in your head in experiencing the reality in your life. When Jesus said eternal life is knowing God, including God the Son, Jesus Christ, he did not mean that eternal life is knowing about God. He was not referring to someone who has read many books and attended numerous seminars about God. He was talking about a firsthand experiential knowledge. We come to truly know God as we experience him in and around our lives. Many people have grown up attending church and hearing about God all their lives, but they do not have a personal, dynamic, growing relationship with God. They never hear His voice. They have no idea what God's will is. They do not encounter His love firsthand. They have no sense of divine purpose for their lives. They may know a lot about God, but they don't really know Him. Merely knowing about God will leave you unsatisfied. Truly knowing God only comes through experience as he reveals himself to you through his word and as you relate to him. Throughout the Bible, we can see that God took the initiative to disclose himself to people through life events. It's in one of those life events that we're going to go back and take a look at, try to understand possibly what's, what's going on, why I don't see God, why I don't feel God, why I don't hear from God, why I'm not experiencing God, uh, in the way that uh, the author has been promising. 
I ask you guys, if you would, please, to open your Bibles to Isaiah 6. We're going to concentrate on uh, Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. I'm going to go through and read it in. We're opening some prayer. We're going to get going. I'm going to give you the phrase that we're going to use quite a bit in that today. And it comes out of the first part of Isaiah 6, opening in verse 1. It says, When King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Let's go through and read the, the rest of that from 1 through 8. We'll pray and we'll get, get this study underway. Isaiah 6, starting in verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. Heavenly Father, as your men gather in this place that today, Lord, we uh, we seek you. Lord, we, we desire, our heart's desire is to experience in you uh, in the, the, the way of John 17, 3. To, to know you truly, God. Uh, in that word of, of Gnosko, Lord, that intimate, passionate, undeniable, uh, unbelievable experience of knowing you as uh, uh, our God. So, Father, we ask that you be with us, your men, as we take a look at what is most likely holding us back uh, as we get into Isaiah. And through a life experience with him, you reveal yourself to us through your word and empower us to uh, understand a little bit further the work that's still necessary, Lord, if we want to experience you. So, Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for these men in this room. I thank you for your presence. In your son's name I pray. As I was going through and, 2 o'clock this morning and uh, God was speaking to me he, he brought me back to this thing of, of what this struggle is in the area of relationship uh, maybe maybe something that we haven't done I haven't done in terms of, of bringing the, the message of, of God's word of this relationship and how we experience him and what hinders us what work we have to do in order to begin that process I promise you guys, as we got into the study uh, four months ago on that, uh, that we would struggle uh, to get through the entire book before we climb the mountain next May uh, and head back up the mountain for, for a retreat. There is that much information. There is that much uh, instruction. There is that much of a uh, conviction of heart that has to take place to even begin to understand this concept of experiencing God. So once again, we're going to go back over this area of our relationship with him. And it's, God was, was prompting me, the Holy Spirit began to kind of stir things up inside me. I came back to a, a phrase that I remember out of uh, one of my favorite devotional books, My Utmost for His Highest, uh, by Oswald Chambers and that. This is a book that I have treasured for a long, long time. Uh, if you know a little bit of, of my story, I started into this thing called men's ministry and dared to walk through a, a door. Um, I was typical of a lot of guys that I uh, bring a smile on my face when I see it happen in, in this place, where, wherever we're at, is taking place. But a man will walk through the door and uh, sit down. Sometimes I can't get him any more than inside that door, and that's okay with me. And I remember where I was at. I walked into uh, a men's ministry room. Uh, with instructions from she who must be obeyed, um, that you'll begin this process of getting around men of God. Begin to get God's word that put in your life. And I sat in a circle. And I sat there and I literally defied them to get anything out of me. 
I was doing what I was told, I was in this room, but I defy you to, to crack. Um, this man is this sitting in this room that's here. And for week after week, as we got into uh, our small group discussions and that going through, uh, the group leader would go around, man by man, how was your week? What's going on? What's taking place in that? And I would sit there with arms folded and basically say, I got nothing, okay? Just, I got nothing. One day, a guy named Fred Thomas, I was out on the job site working, and my phone rang. And I answered the phone, he said, hey, Kevin, this is Fred. I was just thinking about you today. I'm on a layover in St. Louis. And I was just thinking about how much we appreciate and we value having you in our men's group in that. I, I didn't know what to say. I had never had anybody talk to me in that way before. And it was at that moment that God cracked this heart of mine. And began the process of me to begin opening up and to share and come around a group of men and get involved. And I have committed my, the rest of my life to never leave this thing called men's ministry because of what can happen if we are open and true and real. One man to another in the presence of your God and watch the things that he will do in our lives and that. Amen. I want to experience God, but I don't see from him. I don't hear from him. I, I, I don't get what's going on. What's the problem? The phrase that came out of the Oswald Chambers book that struck me was, character determines revelation. You've got a handout set that's in there. We're going to go through the, the top sheet there. What you have is six of the devotions out of my utmost for his highest. <clears throat> Focus on this area of character. Requirements of character as if we're going to become uh, God's men and dare to even <coughs> approach him and asking him for uh, an opportunity to join him in what he has that's going on. The definition of, of character by, by Tozer is the excellence of moral beings. The book definition of uh, character is the sum of his or her disposition thoughts, intentions, desires, and actions. The sum of those things. They're there. Romans 5.4 reminds us that perseverance produces character in that. We need to be faithful to stay on the journey that God's given us as we attempt to understand and experience this thing called God in our lives and that. that when we get to this point of asking the questions, the answer is always in God's Word. We need to go back, as Monty said, back to the foot of the cross, back to that source and bring it back to that point of asking the question, what am I not doing yet, God? Okay? What hasn't taken place in me that you want to have happen so that you can reveal yourself to me? And that's where our journey begins as we go through um, Isaiah 6 in that important line at the beginning. When King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. If you were just to read that very quickly as you're going through Isaiah 6, you'd go, okay, thanks, at least for the reference as to a context of time for what's going on or a brief glimpse into what's taking place in um, the, the, the nation that he's living in. Um, when King Uzziah died, okay, I, I can pretty well walk in on that. Don't miss the message that's there. If you understand the relationship that was going on and the importance of that phrase, when King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. King Uzziah was uh, a good king, one, one of the good guys. Man. He ruled for about a 52-year period of time. He was a, a man of God. Um, he was somebody that Isaiah had deep admiration and respect for. Um, as King Uzziah continued through his 52 years in that. Unfortunately, he got to a point where uh, his head got swollen. He, he forgot about the Lord and began to try to, to do a couple things on, on his own. And God struck him with leprosy and he ended up dying because of his uh, disobedience that was there. One of the most important men in Isaiah's life had just died. And the phrase as we start out on this journey that 
is when King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. What's, what's the significance? How do we begin to, to, to pull those pieces and that together? Isaiah saw within Uzziah, the king that was there, a good man. Isaiah wanted a relationship with, with the Lord in that. But he began to take his focus off of God and put it into, into a man. He would watch the example of that man, see what was taking place, see a good man, want to follow him in that, and began to put his admiration and respect in a wrong place. So when King Uzziah died, Isaiah found himself alone with himself. The, the man who had uh, the man who had been so significant in his life in that was gone. And he found himself at a point of, at that time, I saw the Lord. Sometimes when we get things out of whack of that, somebody or something in our lives has to be taken away. Something put us back into a proper perspective that goes on. Something that allows us to, to get back away from the, the wrong things that we are looking at and admiring. Like a character flaw that's still within us. That we think that we're doing okay because we're watching the, the actions of another man, rather than focusing on where our focus should be, which is on uh, the God above, uh, where all, all of our focus and, and attention should be, should be brought to. So as Isaiah went through, that date was a significant event in his life. It was not just a contextual date for reference to what's going on in the nation and that. It was a life-changing event that took place for him. King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord for the first time in a long time. His eyes were back focused on the Lord and that. And he walked, it was walked in through a vision that God gave him that in the, in the presence of the, thro the throne room that was up there and saw, saw the Lord for the first time in all of his glory and all of what was taking place that was out there. He's now in the throne room, flowing robes, seraphims are out, songs of holy, holy, holy that's going on. And as Isaiah stood in that presence and saw the Lord for exactly who it was that uh, he was experiencing in that, he, he was brought to, brought to his knees. He was brought to a point of having to say, I'm undone. I am a man of unclean lips. I now understand what it is, and the title of our chapter in chapter 8 says, it's God invitation to join Him. And you can stop at that point and just focus on that word Him that's out there. To, to be in the presence of God, to the standpoint that God has given you the vision of exactly who He is. Flowing robes, seraphims around Him, choirs of angels singing, singing, holy, holy, holy over and over and over again. And Isaiah, who thought he was doing good, he had focused on, he was trying to be a godly man, trying to uh, follow the examples that are out there, he took his focus from the Lord and put it into another man. And at that point, he was humble to the point of him saying that I am brought into the presence of the Lord, I am undone, I am of unclean lips. As he brought himself to that, that point, that was there. Um, I guess we, we've got to ask ourselves the same question. Who is our King Uzziah that's out there? Who have we still put? And this gets into why I'm not seeing from God. I'm not knowing God. I'm not hearing from God in the way that I should. I'm not fully experiencing God because somewhere out there it is in some format I haven't yielded and surrendered a King Uzziah who's, who's in my life. The question for you, 
Obviously, Pastor Rick is not here today. Pastor Randy's with us. But let me ask you a question of that. If Pastor Rick never walked through the door again, if his message that was out there, if his example wasn't there, and you were standing alone that was there, where would you find yourself? When King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. As much as we're dependent on and grateful and blessed to have Pastor Rick and Pastor Randy um, preach to us on a daily basis and that, that we can consistently use a phone call away, it's a text away, you can walk through the door, you can come in, and that man is here, and God is working with him, and God's word is around us and that. How much are we, how much dependence are we putting on him to represent God that's out there? There comes a point where you're going to have to find yourself alone. To find yourself standing without the King Uzziah around and to acknowledge in full the glory of God as Isaiah saw it in the throne room of that and understand the concept of who it is that we're asking to be in the presence of. That we're asking for the opportunity to experience kick that around in my head and try to, to, to picture it myself in that. I do, do the heart check. It, who have I put so much dependence upon? I love the church. I love the pastors. I love the leadership. I love you guys. I love guys like Monty getting up and uh, preaching the truth that comes into it, man. But I, I've got to take the time and say, if I'm not because I'm not, if I'm not fully knowing, if I'm not fully seeing, if I'm not fully hearing, if I'm not fully experiencing God, it's a character flaw that's in me that needs to be addressed. Character determines revelation. God says that we need to go back through and take a look at those character issues that are in our heart before he's going to fully reveal himself to us. We're, we're an unclean, filthy object in that, asking to come up and walk alongside the, the King of Kings that's out there. We need to do a character check and take a look at where we are at in terms of where our focus is at. How are we uh, manifesting our, our love and our devotion to God? Okay, Is our focus continually on Him where it ought to be? Or are we resting too much in the comfort of knowing that we come in with a group of guys that are here talk about it and say that, that that was good. That's the focus where it is. But still I'm not experiencing God. I still don't understand what's taking place. So out of the example of <coughs> day six, as we further go through it that um, there there's three areas that are in here. When King Uzziah died, Isaiah sought the Lord. When King Uzziah died Isaiah had to search his heart. And when King Uzziah died, Isaiah surrendered his life. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. A lot of us can remember specific days, specific time, and every single event that's taking place in our lives. Where were you when the Twin Towers went down? What was the date associated with that? Your birthday, your wife's birthday, Special dates and that that have come up without hesitation and no reservation that you can say that this is the date that was there. I have a question for you. What was the, the date? What was the year or has it taken place yet when King Uzziah died in your life and I saw the Lord? There was a date when you said and you walk in and I surrender and I accept Christ into my heart. We began this process that we're going to walk through for the rest of our lives. For, for all of our lives and pursue that's going on. And I thought if I went around the room, you could pretty much give me a date when that took place. I don't see God, I don't hear God, I don't know God. Why? Because when King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. What's the date that that has taken place? Can you put a date to that time with confidence in your heart and say that my King Uzziah is dead? I see the Lord and I understand what it is to be in his presence and ask to experience in him in my life, to join him in his work, to take place in that. What's that, what's that date? 
has it taken place? I think the honest answer to that question is it hasn't taken place yet. I'm hoping that through this study, maybe, that 2018 can be the year that all of us can say that King Uzziah has died. And I saw the Lord for the first time. I understand what it is to be in his presence. I understand what it is to, to see him in the way that he wants us to see him and be in a heart position to go with him and walk with him as we go through uh, and carry out his work that he wants to do through us. It's God's invitation to join him in his works. Too much of the time we make it all about uh, letting God join us in what we think is right and what we need to do. And that King Uzziah needs, needs to die. So what did, what did Isaiah do? What are the, the steps in the rest of the, the passage that are, that are in there that are significant to us? Isaiah found himself in, in the throne room that was out there. He said, I, I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips because I basically hang out with people who are, who are unclean. As much as we talk to each other, as much as we hold each other accountable and that type of thing, standing in true presence of creator God, it's up there. You begin, to hopefully, to understand that concept of what it is of how undone that we are, how unclean we are, we have in, in our hearts, in our actions, in our character, all the definitions that go with that, um, and how much how much work needs to be done, um, and, and what's what's attached to that. Uh, to, to to say I, I, I'm a I'm in bad shape. I, I, I'm a long way from where I thought I was when I walked through the door this morning. Because my King Uzziah hasn't hasn't died. My God, the God of glory, who stands out there, and I am unclean and unworthy to, to join him in where he was at. Isaiah had to go in and find himself in that position so that he could begin the process of surrendering his life, of truly giving it over and acknowledging the, the verse out of. Uh, Isaiah 53 that Monty went through in that. Christ had to come down for the, all of our iniquities that was there. Right? Those iniquities that are there, the, the unclean lips that we have, all the actions that, that take place in that, we, we need to get those confessed. Truly confessed, repented to, and put our focus back on, on God, that we might be able to begin the process of experiencing Him and joining Him in His work He wants to do through us. An angel of the Lord came with a chunk of coal on the tongue, looked to put it on his, his tongue, and asked him, did he be willing to, to accept this, this cleaning that was there? That's, that's a point of surrender that we, we need to do. We find ourselves in the presence of God as an unclean man, seeking his, his uh, invitation to, to join him, and what we need to do is to fully confess and repent and turn away those iniquities that we still have so Isaiah took the, the coal that was on him he confessed his sins he brought them before the, the Lord in full in his presence of that and fully understood maybe for the first time what's needed as part of experiencing God As Uzziah continued on, um, <clears throat> he's, he's in the throne room. He's seeing and understanding and experiencing God for the first time in the full majesty and glory of, of, of who God is that was there. I'm unclean. I need to uh, make the, the confession <clears throat> and the, the repentance in my life and accept the, the cleansing that I might be a worthy man that was there. It was at that point that the Lord then asked, asked the question, whom shall I send? It was at that point in that condition of a man standing before his God alone with his Uzziah gone and a heart that had been repented and confessed and turned back towards God that God then said, whom shall I send? It was at that point that God's invitation to join him and his works that he found Isaiah in a condition suitable 
that God would say, come join me. Now you understand who I am. Now you understand what it is to, uh, why I've not allowed a full seeing me, hearing me, knowing me, experiencing me that was yet. Because our character determines revelation. The flaws in our character need to be acknowledged and addressed before God's going to fully reveal himself to us and call us out for the work that he wants to do through us in that. Amen. Isaiah's response was that here I am, send me. Here am I. Not here I am down here ready to, to do it in the condition that we find ourselves in this room here this morning in that. Finally he could say, here am I. Now I understand. Now I have acknowledged and seen and experienced the majesty and glory of our, of our God. I understand that I am a long way from what I thought I was going to be and I begin to understand the process of why that invitation hasn't been fully extended and experienced by me yet because I needed to confess and repent. And then God said, come join me in the work that I'm going to do. So much of, of what we do in, in the, the handouts that are there is like five or six uh, devotions out of the ultra's highest. There are five or six different examples out of God's word of what it is to go through and take this thing of a spiritual revision, this thing of uh, character determining revelation that's in there that you can go through. I invite you guys to go through and take some time. One to, to go back and take a look at your King Uzziahs that are in your life. Put, put a name to them. Like begin to identify what they are what they look like in that and acknowledge that they exist. That there is something, one or more, that's out there that is holding you back from even beginning to understand who it is that we are asking to be in the presence of that we might join him in his works that he wants to do through us. Go in. There's, there's some, some good meditation. I highly recommend the, the my utmost for his highest book as a, a wonderful devotional source. Got a great index in the back to go through and take a look at topics if you want to go through um, and begin to get closer to, to God and begin to go back and take a little bit extra time in whatever way your, your devotion that looks like. Um, Upmost.org is, you can do it online, you can go through and pick up one click and you can go ahead and pick out any date, any topic, any whatever you want to do and spend some time with God that's there. So, my question, I guess, that comes to you is, what do we do with this, this information? We've gone through for about a four-month period of time. Two, two and a half, three months of that focused again and again and again on this thing called a relationship with God. It's there. That we're attempting to understand. And we've gone from the under, beginning to understand the importance of relationship. We've gone into God pursues a love relationship. We're going to walk in ourselves back into God's invitation now to, to join him in his works in that. And yet we're not ready to take that on. We're really not in a position to fully go in and understand God's invitation to join him in his work if we don't understand the essence of character determining revelation and uh, the message contained in, in Isaiah 6 and the other the other passages that are on the, the devotional handouts that's there. So what do we do with the information? One of the handouts that we've given out in the course of our study now is, you've got to get back it, it's in there. It's called, How Are You Doing? It's basically a summary of where we have been over the course of the last four months. I'm going to ask you guys to go back and take one more look at what it is, maybe with a, a, a different set of eyes with fresh eyes that are on it, with a heart that's in a little bit different condition, we go through and read through this list and be reminded of what it is that uh, God's been trying to show us over the course of these, these last four months. And I'm doing that trying to get to a, to a verse real quick. So, 
number one, do you start your day with a daily expectation of his presence? I'm going to ask you to, to read it with different eyes going through. Do you start your day with a daily expectation of truly what his presence represents that you're asking uh, and expect to have come into your life? Go back through the, the, the passages and the verses and the, the challenges and the commands that we the, the Isaiah verses that we've gone through in that and understand whose presence and what presence it is that we're expecting on a daily basis of that. It's right. It's, it's completely right to expect on a daily basis of his presence in that. But take a look at the condition of, of your heart. Take a look at the condition of who it is that's going up there saying, God, I'd love to have you, I'd love to have your presence with me today. But I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. Take a look and, and go through that point that's there. Marty mentioned it in his, his devotional on Isaiah 53 for number two. What's God's name, nature, and character you're calling on today? If we're asked to look at the, the character that's within us, and if uh, character is the sum of his or her disposition, thoughts, intentions, desires, and actions. What's the sum of the name or nature or character that you are calling on today to put a name to, to a God? You're, you're my rock, you're my refuge, you're my fortress, you're my strength, you're my Lord Jesus. Pick a name. In the back of the book, and that as we've gone over before, there's about 1,600 names that go through. As you wake up on a daily basis and that, asking and expecting his presence in your life, which God do you need to have on that, on that daily basis to fully acknowledge and call and experience his presence in your, in your daily walk? The challenge you go through on a daily basis and that as you wake up to go through and take a look at the situations that you're going through. The, the tribulations that, that life throws at you, the challenges, the obstacles that are out there, and know that you have a God who, is, who will greet you, a God who will meet you, a God whose presence you can enjoy and experience in that, but call him by name. Call him with the, the name that you need on that daily basis to have a walk with you that's going through. And maybe more importantly is number three, what's your name? Monty mentioned it in the list <laughs> One of the guys in our group used to refer to himself as a, a steamy pile that was out there. And a lot of the guys have, have worked on him, and God has worked in his heart, and the Holy Spirit has prompted him that, that you're, you're a child of God. You're, you're, you're a child of the King that's there. What's your name? Jacob battled and wrestled with God and expected a blessing before he said he would, he would let go of God. What was God's response to him? What's your name? How do you see yourself? Who is it that I'm dealing with in that? Two things out of that. First, he said, my name is Jacob. He acknowledged, he confessed. He said, I am Jacob. I'm a deceiver. I'm a conniver. Whatever. Because of the name that had been given to him and truly by his actions in, that, in his life. But God at the same time said, you're no longer that deceiver. You're no longer that conniver. You're no longer Jacob. You're Israel in my eyes and Okay? God's asking us if we're going to expect the, the God that we need that's out there with a name, nature, and character um, is exactly what we need to call out on a daily basis. The presence of him that we require as a name that we can put to it, God says, who am I dealing with? What's your name that's out there? As you start your day going through expecting his presence and calling on the name of God in that, take a look at yourself and ask yourself, what's your name that you're applying to? Okay? Yeah, I, I need to confess, God. I, I am a deceiver. I'm a conniver. I'm a, I'm a whatever. But I understand through your grace and your mercy and what you're doing in my life and salvation that was given to me on the cross and that, that I have another name. I have a new name that's out there. I am anointed. I am redeemed, as the, the song said. Go down through the list of that and attach your name in strength and confidence that you're not the old man that used to be, as the words of that song was there. What's your name? In our book, one of the areas that we went over quite a bit, page 32 in the book, I don't even have to look it up or turn to it, Matt. 
that if we ask the wrong question, we're going to get the wrong answer. That's number four. The questions on this piece of paper says, what's God's will? What we continually ask ourselves on a daily basis of that is, what is God's will for my life? What's the focus on it in that phrase that's out there? Right? We're just taking it away from God and saying, what's, what's, what do you got for me? What's in it? What's your, your will for, for my life? Rather than knowing and seeking and walking with and being invited to join him on what God's will is. <clears throat> got the notation of John 6, 40. That's there. I'm going to read through real quick from 38 through, through 40 as a reminder of what God's will is. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. We're asking the question, what's God's will for my life? Join him in what, in what his will is. That we might go out to a, a tired, beat up, crusty, miserable world that's out there and find one more. Find one more to join him so that all the, uh, who believe in him may have everlasting life. It's there. That's the question, what's God's will? Not, not with my life. And as you've got that part in your heart now, we go to... Number five, what is it that God is purposing to accomplish through me where I am? And let me add to that one, who I am. What can I do on a daily basis in that today to uh, accomplish through me God's purpose, God's will that's out there? What can I do to reflect his image a little bit more, fully understanding who it is uh, that we are serving? That presence has been given to us and understanding how broken we are, but having him say, turn, repent, and come join me, and I will invite you to join me in my words. What's he looking to accomplish in you uh, today, where I am, at work, in this room, um, where, the grocery store, the gas station, wherever it may be, what do I need to accomplish in here? Number six, to be God's servant, you must be moldable and remain in the hand of the master. There's no other place that we should find ourselves other than centered in the hand of the master who's there. On a daily basis, that he will mold us and shape us into the vessel that he wants to use on that particular day in whatever shape or form he desires for us to appear. That through that vessel uh, that's perfectly made by him, no flaws in that that are in it, that he may be glorified and magnified and his purpose and will might be accomplished as there take ourselves out of that hand of the master and that we can't possibly be in a position where God can fully make use of us and we fully acknowledge that he's in control and we are completely yielded and surrendered and given a date to the day that King Uzziah died and I saw the Lord and understand what's, what's being asked of me. And maybe most importantly in the bottom, are you a volunteer or a servant? The definition that came out of volunteer is a that I'll agree to do something for for you if you'll just get off my back and quit asking. <clears throat> That's a typical volunteer. I'll put in my time for a little bit. I'll make a good show. I'll show up in that. But I'm gonna, I don't ask me to get in this thing full time. Okay? Are you a volunteer or a servant? Servant to the bidding of, of the master that's there to accomplish what that master's task is, is put to us in that. I don't want to be a volunteer. I want to be his servant. In every, in every way, shape, and form as possible on a daily basis in that, that I might experience of God uh, in, in, a, in a full, full manner, completely used by Him, and to definitely be called uh, His servant, and rather than, uh, if today's a good day, I'll, I'll give you a 20 minutes, God, if that's what I can give you today. I ask you guys to go through and take a look at the verses that are there, to focus on the line year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Why are we not experiencing God in a full many way? Because our character, we're still not right. We're still not there. When those questions come up to us on a daily basis and that as to why I'm not doing, 
is certainly not God's fault. Certainly not God attempting to exclude us. It's God attempting to improve us, to uh, bring us to, to full potential for what's there. But we have to do our part. Our part has to be put into it in that before he's going to fully reveal himself to us and allow us to experience him in a new and unique way as we go through this incredible journey uh, that's been given to us on the day we surrendered and accepted and this journey that the, the men of God in this room have said, I want to experience God in a new way. There's a cost. There's a large cost that's involved to it and that. I ask you guys if you do a, a strong heart check that's out there. Um, take a look at it and that and reset your priorities. <coughs> reset your focus that's there and see if it doesn't make a difference in how you see, hear, know, and experience God in your life. We close with John 17, 3. This is eternal life. That they would know the one true God and Jesus Christ, his son, he sent. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time. Father, as always, uh, we stand uh, humble and convicted, to the Lord, by the, the power, the beauty, the truth, Lord, that's found in your word. Father, we ask that you would begin to do a conviction in our heart, Lord, that we understand that character determines revelation, Lord, and that we are flawed people, that there are character flaws within us that we ask you to, to identify. Lord, that we can acknowledge in full in front of you, Father, that we might become your men by us, acknowledging flaws, repenting from them, and finding us in a position that when you extend your invitation and ask, whom shall I send, Lord, without hesitation, our hands would be raised and say, here, fully for the first time, here I am, Lord. Use me and sing. It's in your son's name,